do, I want to introduce our guest. She is the CEO, the founder of Tandem Community, and has a background in digital health and public health. She received her master's of public health from Columbia University, where she specialized in women's mental health programming. I think it's very important that we understand that tonight's topic is going to be around unmasking women's mental health. So friends in the house, would you help me welcome our guest, Sheila Pandy. Sheila, thank you for being in the house tonight. Thank you so much for that introduction. Um, and yeah, I'm very excited to be here and, um, you know, kick off a conversation and also, you know, learn from other people in the room and see, you know, what commonalities that we have. Um, although every woman is unique, um, we also have a lot in common and we've all arrived here in, um, on the Circles Up app, you know, because we're seeking something similar. So I'm excited to chat. Yeah, I appreciate that so much. Yep, it's really neat that we're talking about women. I have a, a new partner that we just brought on for Circles. He's actually hosting our first men's only group on Circles. That's going on simultaneously. So it's interesting. We're on this side talking about women. He's on that side talking about men. Uh, we get all of our gender uh, family involved in these types of conversation. We're going to be able to support a lot of people, which is really, really cool. So um, did I pronounce your last name right, Sheila? Is it Pandy? It's Pande, yeah, close. P Pande, almost. I should have known that A is a little bit out there for me. Pande, I love it. So I wondered if you could do me a favor. I was able to introduce you, of course, by the bio, but um, I wondered if you could kind of unpack yourself a little bit, your story, kind of your journey, highs and lows maybe that got you here. Would you be open to sharing with us? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, yeah, the the intro you gave is very professional and um, doesn't include, you know, everything that goes on in people's lives. But um, yeah, so academically, yes, I studied women's mental health programs. And I actually studied that in the context of humanitarian settings. Um, that was what was available during my public health degree. But really what that allowed me to do was also venture into understanding how different cultures um, access and understand women's mental health and why they do or don't want to receive mental health treatment and support. Mm -hmm. And um, I myself am a first generation born Indian American. And so I've you know, grown up balancing two different cultures and learning how to learning how to balance those cultures balance different communication styles um you know we weren't really a bilingual household but there's still different ways in which different cultures interact and assume different behaviors and so for me um when i started realizing that okay i need support in my own ways who are the people that i can reach out to in my own community who do already have a strong understanding of, of you know, what getting help means and, um, and that it's okay to get help. And um, yeah, there was a variety of events in my life. And I think on the women's side, really, um, obviously our menstrual cycles play a huge role in um, what we're feeling and experiencing. And I started noticing that my moods were very in sync with my menstrual cycles. So mm -hmm. I started taking, I started noting that down um, and I took that information to um, a gynecologist of mine. And at the time um, she actually diagnosed me with PMDD, which is a premenstrual dysphoria disorder. And, um, and lo and behold, like that, the best treatment for that is actually a birth control treatment. And um, as soon as I got on it the next month, I felt so much better. And I think, you know, not only is there stigma around, around how you're feeling um, emotionally, but there's also so much stigma around birth control and um, young women don't necessarily always have the tools to, to get birth control or to advocate for themselves. So that's kind of where my, my women's mental health journey started. And I think um, for young women, that's my, might be where it starts, but 
for every phase in a woman's life, um, there are hormonal changes that can really impact how we're feeling. Yeah, so well said. A mouthful already, friends, in the house, right? So I love your authenticity. I love you allowing us to peek inside of your experience, Sheila. Thank you for sharing that. Um, someone wrote a book years ago, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. You remember that book? Yes. <laughs> and it is so profound because I think the differences from male to female could be a source of a lot of contention between couples and communication in general. Did, did you find that when you were starting to experience these mental health issues and who did you have someone to reach out to? How was your experience of getting support or help during that time, Sheila? Yeah, I mean, I think, well, I think fortunately I had enough wherewithal and I didn't place stigma on myself. The first thing is to say, I need help and I want help. And um, maybe you don't know who the best type of like healthcare provider to reach out to is. I happen to know because I, I have a background in public health. Um, and so at the same time, I did reach out to my gynecologist and to a therapist at the same time. But, you know, I think um, the first step is saying, okay, I do need help. How do I go about doing this? And, you know, with, with communities like Circle or communities that you might exist within in other parts of the internet is finding the best platforms and, um, and real healthcare clinicians or coaches who can, who can guide you through that. And I think that is actually one main difference between men and women is that women do really, really rely on community. Um, there isn't as much stigma in building community among women as there is with men. So we have that going for us. Um, we do, we do like to talk about our emotions and I think um, that's obviously a positive thing, but I think the next step in growth is, okay, are we actually like channeling this emotion or providing a solution to this uh, negative emotion in a healthy way? Like potentially our friends can't be there for us, you know, every time. So what is the healthiest way? And so, um, I do think there is a lot of gender differences in how we go about finding care, but I think there's, there is still a lot of stigma in taking that leap in finding professional care. But, um, and I, I encourage women to kind of take note of, you know, other things that are going on in their body when they're having emotional reactions and um, understand if it, if it has to do anything with hormones or gynecology and, and it may or may not. Um, but that's just one other extra route to take. Yeah. I love what you said in the beginning is that I knew that I needed to ask for help. Mm -hmm. That's a very big step for all of us going through, regardless of what difficulties in life that we're facing is the ability to ask for help. Yes. Um, so I'm wondering, it looks like somebody else, Marla, it's good. So friends, we've had technical difficulties on our end. Lori, I so appreciate you. Um, I am, I'm having people text me immediately while we're talking, saying, I can't even see the room. The room says that it's not open. So just give me a half a second. Um, Marla, what did you see? Are you, you obviously were able to get in? Yeah, I had to, I had to re-download the app. Oh so. my and then um, I saw you on, but that's it. Oh my, so you read down to the depth and saw me on. I'm wondering if I leave the room and come back in, will it give us more? But I, I just am afraid to lose the connection that we have, right? Right, usually um, when the room's not closed, when it says, you know, you're after your time, then you might get kicked out. I, I never leave after time, but before time, you should be okay, I mean. How okay. hard is it? Yeah, I'm going to stop. How hard is no, it to no, start no. another room? Like, I saw yeah. you having two rooms one night. I'm like, okay, we'll just wait. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that, that, no, that's interesting. So here's what I'm going to do. Sheila, are you okay with continuing your conversation? Lori, Katrina, Marla, are you okay with just having this? I'm going to exit without closing, and I'm going to come right back in. 
if I lose you, I apologize profusely ahead of time, but I will keep searching until I find you again. Okay, Miss Sheila, I'm so sorry. I've never had this happen, but I want it to be no the best problem. experience for everybody. Okay, super. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go out of the room and come back in and you all keep talking and hopefully I'll come right back in, okay? Perfect. I'll be there in a second. Okay, so it, it looks like we have the same folks on. So <laughs> that's okay. That that's all right. We're gonna keep we're gonna keep going. So um so Sheila, one of the things that I really appreciate, and I'm gonna back up the truck just a little bit, you said that we need to learn to ask for help. I wonder during your journey, did you ever go through the stigma that was attached to maybe the feelings that you were feeling and not want to reach out for help? Would you be able to share a little bit of that part of your journey with us and how you may have overcome that? Yeah, absolutely. And it looks like we have more people joining, which is exciting. Yes, 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 yes. yay. Um, yeah, so I think, um, you know, when I first started experiencing um, mental health symptoms um, in my, this was a, a, a while ago, but in my mid-20s, I they were actually like very debilitating. Um, and I, I really had such severe anxiety that I, I couldn't move. Um, and like I said, it was, I realized it was time with my menstrual cycle. So I took note of that for a few months before taking that to my, um, to my ob okay. And I think for me, because in that instance, I knew that, there was something biological happening rather than purely emotional. Um, so I, no matter what, you're going to place stigma on yourself. But as a step number one, I was able to tell myself that this is biological. But in any case with any mental health issue, um, whether it's tied to your menstrual cycle or not, as a woman, it is a biological issue. And um, and oftentimes, you know, we go to therapists or we go to other mental health clinicians and they're not necessarily checking out your hormones, um, which could happen um, in an ob gynes office. But we really do look at psychology as, you know, biological conditions. And I think that that's just one way to ease the stress and the stigma off of yourself. I do think, um, you know, having... Uh, the first clinician that you reach out to, you should know that they're going to really have your back and be supportive. Um, I had been to that gynecologist a few times. And so I knew that um, I would be able to be emotionally vulnerable with her and that she would really take what I was saying seriously. Um, and, and that's not a lot of women's experiences. A lot of women, you know, have symptoms. They may or may not notice that they're timed with specific life events um, and they might take them to a clinician who who may or may not believe them or who may diminish what they're feeling and what I say to anyone in the room is that you know keep a keep a quick diary even if it's just one bullet point of what you're feeling and the date and and remind yourself that what you're feeling is real and find that clinician who who hears what you're saying and who wants to help you um, and, and have conversations with you. Yeah, I wrote down friends. I don't know if you, thank you. Um, we've got a few new folks that have joined us. We've been having technical difficulties in this room. So Adrian, it's good to see you. Zara, Amy, Christina, thank you all for being here. Uh, we are talking with uh, Sheila Pandé and she is, um, the founder and CEO of Tandem Community, we're having a discussion tonight about women's mental health 
And um, our guest has shared a lot around um, hormonal changes and difficulties uh, that that women and females experience when they're going through menstrual cycles, uh, which has been phenomenal already. So thank you all for, for joining us. Um, if you have questions or thoughts or comments, please go ahead and drop them in the chat for us as well. We will get to them. Um, you said something that was really important to me, uh, Sheila, and that was, the, I wrote down, emotionally vulnerable. It's scary to be emotionally vulnerable, yes? Absolutely, and because I think you have to be that vulnerable with yourself first. Mm -hmm. um, and you obviously don't want to take that vulnerability once you swallow that pill and take it to somebody who doesn't take it seriously. And, um, and I do think that it's hard for, for women to find that um, in their first leap or their first, um, you know, their first interaction with taking care of their mental health. Yeah. So there's a lot going on here. What you just said also is that I have to be emotionally vulnerable with myself. What have you found in even in your work with other women going through similar things? Why are we so opposed to being open with ourselves and admitting we need help? What is that? Yeah, I think... Yeah, it's hard. It's a, there's a lot to unpack. And I also think it depends a lot on the context of how you're feeling stress or, um, you know, emotionally upset. And in in those contexts, you know, women, we, we are, we are emotional creatures, but we're not necessarily given that space. And then once we do have to come to terms with it, we might not know where to find that space and it might be easier to ignore it. So I think, you know, addressing that is first telling yourself like whatever you're, whatever you're thinking that, oh, I'm supposed to be a strong leader at work or I'm supposed to be a great mom or a great grandma or um, I'm supposed to be like, the community leader, like at church or temple, you know, those things are all stressful and on top of taking care of ourselves and our family. And I think um, in those moments where we feel stress and where we want to kind of give ourselves the strength um, or like the Wonder Woman persona, we have to just remember that, you know, there are times where we, not just our body needs rest, but our mind needs rest. And we deserve that. And we also deserve to have the support system who allows our mind to have rest. And we can go back into all of those roles as strong as possible. And, you know, usually in the family setting or the work setting, you have to bounce back into that role like immediately the next day. But, um, really giving yourself, you know, even just that 30 minutes that you deserve and telling yourself that like for 30 minutes, you don't have to be superwoman. Yeah, boy, I would write that on my mirror, my hand <laughs> for, 30, <laughs> for 30 minutes. I don't have to be superwoman. I mean, I'm not a woman, but I'm going to take that to heart, Sheila, because I think I just had this conversation with my wife recently about I know I've been able to become self-aware enough of my my own behavior patterns to know that if if I don't feel on if I don't feel pulled and motivated and on and accomplished it's hard for me to do nothing it's hard just to sit and do nothing I think that's what I hear you saying um, we have to learn how to give ourselves space to do nothing and to know that we're okay in that space yes yes actually and it's so important to think about what's happening and rather than just it's it's easy to um punish yourself and say i shouldn't be feeling that way i should be grateful to be a mom or i should be grateful to have this leadership position at, at work but it's okay to feel disappointed about any of those things and um it's also okay to just sit with your emotions. It's okay to complain to someone. Um, and, and then 
but you do have to also recognize like what is the frequency and how much stress is it causing you if you do need to get that professional support. Yeah, I, I, I like that. I, I think that's a great observation is we must be self-aware to, to see and realize when this desperate desire or need um, is, is, is becoming a negative pattern in our lives. Right, right, Sheila, because because sometimes being addicted to that approval to that, oh, I just need somebody to cry. And that's OK, because we need that. But if we're not careful, we can become addicted to that behavior. And even because it's around negativity, because negativity is so emotionally charged for one who can't feel anything at all and desperate to feel, we'll settle for negativity. Right. Just be so, so we can feel something. Does that make sense? Yes, absolutely. And, and, you know, like, what I'm working on at Tandem Community, which is a postpartum digital mental health app optimized for diverse women, really, what we're allowing women to do is a express themselves and express themselves beyond their identity of motherhood, because, you know, you're allowed to say that motherhood or a specific part of your life is is stressful and you're also allowed to enjoy other parts of your identity in your life and there's no shame in that and I think that's where a lot of women get a lot of flack is that if you're like if you complain about one thing we're seen as ungrateful and that's just simply not true um you can be balancing great great things in your life and then you can also be struggling and need help and support in another area yeah that is so well said friends i just dropped the link to um choose website um in the chat so make sure you visit that you made me think sheila i just had a conversation with my wife who she's been going through, she just turned 50 in June. So she's going through these emotions and hormonal changes, energetic changes around this midlife area, which has really been, now we've been together, trying to kind of give the audience a little bit, we've been together for 31 years now, married 28. So, so being able to learn everybody's and each other's ebbs and flows, um, one of the things that me as a partner, and maybe you can talk to us a little bit about this, because I think this is so critically important for partners. One of the things that we've been trying to talk about is I need to understand her better than I could ever. But the challenge is, is I don't know that I will ever understand her. So yeah. the whole point is, is what can partners do during these times that will help support even if we don't understand it all. And that's pretty loaded. I know, Sheila, but can you help us out a little bit of that in your experience? Yeah. I mean, of every every person's um like partnership relationship is is so different. But I think um step number one, it seems like you guys have had really open conversations about, you know, changes that are happening to her biologically and then hence psychologically. And that's, that is step number one is being able to have that open conversation. And, and, you know, I think for women, when we have these emotions that are hormonally related or related to our reproductive health, um, just emotions about it, period, about, you know, postpartum or menopause, and then the subsequent psychological effects of that, it's a lot to handle. And I think Sometimes we're trying to just manage the emotion rather than maybe we don't necessarily have the emotional capacity to understand what's actually happening in our bodies. And so, you know, I think the other half of this is like potentially some women would want to know what is happening in their bodies so that they can maybe take control of it better or find other solutions. And I think potentially depending on your partnership, one thing that you could ask is like, do you want me to like do research on this? Like, do you want me to find um, a platform for women in their fifties or a platform for women going through menopause and just offer it and see, you know, how people feel. Um, because I do think just in that partnership relationship, hearing that the other person sees that it's so much to manage, it that 
in of itself takes off so much weight of potential shame that someone is feeling that they're bringing to the relationship. Yeah. You know, I, I made a, a, a side note. Friends, thank you so much for being here. There's more people joining. I'm so excited about our conversation that continues to ramp up. We are talking with Sheila Pondé. You have to check out the website. The work that they are doing is phenomenal, centered around women's mental health. And I love our title tonight of unmasking women's mental health. And that unmasking implies there's a lot there that either we don't know, number one, and we need to know, or we don't really want to reveal and we truly need to reveal. Um, I love what you said, Sheila, about, again, being authentically you, putting yourself first, understanding that we need to ask for help. My wife and I have often had these conversations. Now, we have four children as well. They're from 17, soon to be 18, all the way to 25. And I know my wife has come to me at times and, and, and she was ashamedly to say, Jeff, there are times where I just don't want to be a mom anymore. And I know that's going to sound harsh to those in the room, but I understood it from the standpoint of, oh, my God, we're, we're going through different phases of our lives. And during these different phases, it doesn't mean she doesn't love the kids, right? It doesn't mean that she doesn't love me. She's even looked at me and she said, dude, you know what? I'll take an island by the beach and you can do what you want. We've had those conversations too, right, Sheila? But yeah. that, isn't that a part of our human experience? Isn't that a part of our human journey? Yeah. And I think, you know, it seems like you guys have a really strong relationship in the sense that she can express a negative emotion and it's not being held against her. Um, and I think that's where a lot of fear comes from, especially in any phase in motherhood, um, even starting in pregnancy or infertility, uh, women get very scared and ashamed to express the potential negative side because we're supposed to tell the world that, you know, we're grateful for being pregnant and being a mom. And, um, and that's just not always true. And there's other fears or anxieties that come with that. And, you know, it's your relationship sounds so positive and great. And for those women who may, may not have a partner um, or an adult, another adult, a partner in the, their household or who um, aren't able to communicate with their partner in that way. I just really encourage you to find whoever that other adult is. Um, if that's another mom, um, if that's like a sibling um, who happens to be a parent or your own parent um, or or a community like Tandem because a lot of moms are doing a lot and um, and you do need a safe space. And, and we really make that space for moms to to not only share the, the negative things, but to share them uh, without shame and to celebrate who you want to be as a woman and a mom because that do those are not two separate things that doesn't, um, that doesn't make you less capable of being the awesome person that you are. Yeah, I, I love that. You just dropping all of these one-liners that my my pages are full now. <laughs> you, you, you just said share without shame. I need a t-shirt. Come on, people in the house tonight. Anybody else want to have that? I would wear that t-shirt. I mean, I, I think we're taught to be to be shameful of the things that we try to express. I, I had a guest on the other night and we were talking about the fact of when they grew up, they kind of had this little bubbly inside of them. They wanted to share, they wanted to connect, they wanted to, you know, even from a little girl, but they kept getting not necessarily violently shut down, but shut down in a sense that made them go inward and go, huh. I wonder if what I'm feeling inside is truly important, whether right. that was positive or negative. So do you see that, that sometimes later on in life, some of the emotional and mental um, challenges that females or what ladies are going through could be stemmed from they never got this affirmation when, when they were growing up. I mean, I'm a man absolutely. and I never got that affirmation. Does that make sense, <laughs> Sheila? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, I think that that's absolutely true. Definitely um, women and me men receive that kind of shut down, if you will, in different ways. Um, you know, boys are taught not to cry. 
um, and not to be upset um, or sad. And um, girls are also told the exact same thing, or or if they are told that, they're they're punished for being emotional, and and it it really does like leak into your adulthood, sadly. But I think, you know, the part that's powerful in adulthood and I think where our society is going is that we are giving people the space to express that. And I think it's, again, finding that really close friend who you can tell what's going on and um, and and they and they will receive it without judgment. And um, yeah. it, it takes time. And I think you know, even when you do find that person, um, that close friend, that community, or even that therapist, you know, no one is expecting you to like dump it all on them on day one. Um, I think it's, you can lead your own, you know, journey of, of how you want to express how, what your emotions are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I love it. Friends, um, if you're just tuning in with us, we're talking about how to unmask women's mental health. Uh, we're gaining insights into distinct distinct mental health experiences of women. And our guest, Sheila Pandey, is talking in depth about that with us. Uh, Sheila, I also wrote on my notes, don't take it personal. I think one of the hardest things I've had to do when my wife was going through her, and this is not just about her too, it's about me. And so what I'd love to do is segue into what you have seen the difference between maybe men's mental health issues or symptoms and signs versus females or, or women's symptoms and signs. Are you able to talk about that at all in your experience, Sheila, what you've, what you've been able to glean? Yeah. I mean, I haven't worked with men as much. Um, I, I, definitely worked with women far, far more. But what I can say is that, you know, among, like I said, the world is changing actually in a really positive direction sometimes. And I am proud to say that a lot of the women who are on our platform and men who I have met um, separately who, who are fathers are just really excited to be part of a conversation or know where to find a conversation. And I think, um, and I think what men are, what I see in my platform and community is that men are excited to know about resources that they can offer their wife because, um, you know, people want to be supportive to their um, children's mother, um, whether that be their spouse or their partner. And I think, you know, just seeing that couples together are taking that leap together and supporting each other in those ways is is really beneficial. Um, and that's in the positive direction, you know. I think in um, the, the more, like, truly, like, emotional state of it, as far as new moms, um, new moms can go to like really, you know, dark places. And I think having those conversations before having a baby with your partner or whoever um, is an adult that you trust is extremely important. And that's what we set up also in Tandem Community. We have our third trimester um, emotional support digital toolkit launching um, later this month. And actually what we talk about and what the tools that we give to our users are about how to prepare yourself for a motherhood mindset and how to gather that village before you even have the baby. Um, and gathering that village can also include, you know, support from your partner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely love it. Um, I'm looking at your website and I'm looking at the community. It looks like people can join the community. Um, can you tell us a little bit, I'm curious, how did all of the, the community get birthed? Yeah. Uh, and, and you, Sheila, talk a little bit about that. Where did all this come from? Yeah, so um, so the whole, the larger idea, you know, came from my own experience as an Indian American woman. and. Really what I realized is that um, 
you know, I'm passionate about supporting new moms and new families and this space of postpartum. But what I realized that was happening out there in the in the new mom space is that everything is very much stripped down to, you know, um, potentially diagnosing the mom or, you know, giving telehealth to mom or supporting mom through telehealth. And those are all very, very important things. But on top of that, you know, be, women do not become mothers because they know that they're going to have to like work through their postpartum emotions. Women become mothers because they're excited to share a system of values and build a system of values with a family that they're creating. And this community, you know, really recognizes what those value systems are and, um, and how diversity, you know, really creates really strong families and communities and that we can support each other through um, our unique diversity and through like, you know, some of the tougher times that it means to be a mom. Yeah. So, so hence, even you, you had correlated the mission of circles, which is connecting people going through similar life experiences, right? The whole goal is to make sure that no one has to do life alone, especially a very difficult um, period in time of our lives. So it sounds similar to your community. The idea is I went through some of these things myself. And now when I've gotten through them and learned from them, let me create a, a community a forum, a blog, an outreach to reach back and help others. I hear that. Is that right? That's kind of where that's coming yes. from, Sheila? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I also have, we're, like I said, we're building the, these digital mental health toolkits and they're really structured around understanding, you know, what, who is the, who are you as a mom um, and who do you want to be as a mom? Because um, the fact that you're stressed out isn't what is dictating necessarily uh, the mom that you want to be. And you can be the best mom and develop all of these wonderful memories for your child while um, working through your postpartum emotional recovery. Yeah. I love it. So talk to us just a little bit more. Friends, we're going to open up for questions and comments. If you have some, please, this is the time to ask them. I'm also noticing on your community's website, um, Sheila, that you have um, spots for providers. So tell us a little bit about the structure. Who, who would come to you for support and help? Who would come to you to actually provide support or help if that's an option for your community? Yeah, so um, our providers work directly with me actually to develop the curriculum in the digital mental health toolkit. So we basically have a, a community and then we're launching a product um, in the near future. And the digital mental health toolkits are built with um, cl clinical um, consultants and clinicians in the mental health space who are specialized in postpartum uh, emotional wellness. And so they've helped uh, us build these 12 week toolkits that are clinical scales, wellness checks, uh, content meditations, journaling prompts and community for specific uh, life stages in motherhood. So we're starting with third trimester, our next 12 week kit will be fourth trimester, then return to work and then experienced mom. So um, we, we don't have a tele telehealth as an option at this point in time. It's just the community, but um, we do provide extra resources for moms who seek, who seek those extra um, points of care. Yeah, sounds like a wonderful, a wonderful community. Now you have a partner working with you. This is your, you oversee, you, you've got a team. I'm sure you got lots of people helping you with this, uh, with this vision yes. and dream, yes? Yes, yes. So we have um, a clinical psychologist who wrote the curriculum um, and we have a couple other psychiatric nurse practitioners who have reviewed the curriculum. And so, yeah, we're really excited about it. Um, we've also taken a perspective of diversity and inclusion. So 
what that again really means is like, you know, how do you define yourself as a mom and as a person? And what are these values that are important to you? And not everyone's, um, not every piece of everyone's identity is uh, equally as valuable to each person. And so that allows um, you to connect with women based on values that um, you appreciate, whether that's um, your race or ethnicity or your religion or culture, or the state that you live in. Um, we value all of those things because we know that that impacts, you know, the family values that you're creating. Yeah, it's so important to be with people who support you and get you, right? Mm -hmm. you, you, it's not people who tolerate you, <laughs> right? Yes. You, you need people who really get you. And then I'm learning that, again, just because my wife and I have been together for, again, 30 plus years, it's we have to learn how to communicate to one another, how to support one another. Sometimes support looks like, give me some space, right? It's <laughs> like, just get out of my hair. Um, I, I'm really interested if you can share with us just a little bit, whatever you feel comfortable with, what are some of the emotional challenges, the mental um, challenges that you experience with the, the women who come to your community for support? Are there kind of these signs and symptoms of that are that that you pick up on right away that you see often can you help us understand that yeah. a little bit maybe somebody yeah. today it's going hey that sounds like me and i can relate that's the purpose of the question yeah absolutely um so when you join the community and also when um when the digital kits are available, this will also be a question that we do ask you, you know, what are your major stressors? And really what we've seen is that um, obviously depending on how many kids you have or how many pregnancies you've had um, or how old your child is, that really changes the stressors that moms are thinking about. And so um, uh, usually you know, we actually see moms in the community from uh, early pregnancy until multiple toddlers. And, you know, the, as, as babies grow and develop, you know, they're changing literally every three months, you know, their, their clothes are changing, their feeding habits are changing, their, you know, developmental skills are changing. And every, alongside that, just like you said, that you have to grow with your, um, your wife's communication skills, new moms, they have to grow and develop as their own babies are developing. And that's where a lot of stress comes from. So in the early, um, in the pregnancy stage, we see that there's stress more around like what is going to happen in birth? Um, can I trust my provider? You know, how will I feel? And then when um, you have a newborn, things are really just about catching up and staying awake and keeping the pace. And then when you have maybe multiple toddlers, it's more about staying sane, finding <laughs> peace and making sure that you um, create maybe more than 30 minutes of non superwoman time, maybe an hour or an hour and a half every day, um, it, especially if uh, you're not uh, leaving the house. And so, you know, stressors change as moms develop with their children as well. Yeah, you remind me, I had a friend of mine whose wife suffered from extreme postpartum depression after her first son was born. And I remember doing some counseling myself with the couple, trying to help as much as I could, uh, Sheila. But she really suffered from, she didn't understand the, the feelings and emotions she was going through. A lot of it was negative emotions that were attached to the birth of her son, which she could not believe possible because that's all she wanted to do was have the baby and and so shame was attached to a lot of that um i i think and and i don't know your your um credentials as far as where if you can answer this question or not but i'm thinking when does it become an issue of okay this is this is a biological this is something in me this is this depression this is experiences outside the norm of what you know i should be able to go through and recover from so i need additional help is there a line a definitive line um, that you've been able to identify in the work that you do and your community does 
Yeah, so we do not provide diagnoses, but, um, and I myself am not um, a certified mental health clinician. I um, I do have a, a different background, public health yeah. background, but, you know, the, the diagnostic standards um, are pretty black and white from a clinical perspective, but what we do is we provide we do give those clinical scales. And um, as long as a woman does, is not having thoughts of self-harm um, or harming her baby, they are allowed to move forward in, in our product and community. Um, and regardless of if they do or don't have those thoughts, uh, we do provide them resources based on what state that they live in. But, um, you know, there are definitive guidelines that a clinician could um, talk about, but as far as where we sit is that actually most women um, do experience any sort of postpartum depression, anxiety symptom between the ages of zero and five of their child. So pretty much 80% of women experience stress, like extreme stress at some point in time. But by the time that they get to a doctor or um, a diagnosing clinician, um, unless they have something super chronic and persistent, they're most likely not diagnosable. So only about 10% um, of women annually are diagnosed with postpartum depression, sorry, 10% of new moms. And so that leaves, you know, a lot of women who need support, but they're not necessarily diagnosable. And um, and they might not really want to see a, a clinician or need to see a clinician. And we are supplemental to that. So we are always, you know, working in the best interest of the client and moms. And we want them to get the professional support that they need. But for those moms who are, you know, having a super stressful time in, um, in toddlerhood, uh, but they were fine during pregnancy, you know, we're there for them. Yeah. I love it. I'm just kind of making a recap of some of the things that we've talked about. Again, the things that stand out to me is that I don't have to be ashamed to ask for help. I think mm -hmm. that's a humanity thing. It's like, again, we talked about it socially. We grow up. Um, we don't get affirmed in a get go. All of a sudden, we've got all these emotions going on inside. Um, one of the guests that I had on the other night was talking deeper about how they themselves, because they didn't get that affirmation when they were younger, um, Sheila, it led to them becoming involved in relationships that were not mm -hmm. um, beneficial for them. They, they went from one relationship to the next relationship, and then it finally dawned on them that the reason why they weren't finding the fulfillment in the relationship was because of the part of their life that we're missing from early on. So um, I, I think self-awareness is probably one of the biggest keys that we could try to develop, right? As we're going through any journey through life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think that self-awareness, you know, also allows you, uh, you know, to remove that Wonder Woman mask and say, Again, like I don't have to be Wonder Woman, um, and you know where where are these emotions coming from, and is there a solution? Yeah, my mind was just going to because I know so many female entrepreneurs, powerful, just like yourself, business, you know, minded, and they're they've got the classes on how to be Wonder Woman. Maybe we need to have a class on how not to be Wonder Woman. Come on, yeah. Sheila. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. So here's what we'll do, friends. We'll go from the how to be a Wonder Woman, throw down toast, do all that stuff, and then afterwards slip out the back door and go, okay, do I have to do this all the time? <laughs> Is there another class that I could take to let me know I'm okay, even if I don't put my Superman cape or my superhero cape on? Yeah. Yeah, yes. that's good. That's good stuff. Friends, we're going to talk. We're going to pause here in a second. Um, I've got so many people here. Thank you for staying with us. We're talking to Sheila Pande. Um, she is the CEO and founder of Tandem Community. It's a community that helps women in postpartum mental health. Uh, it, it appears to be the journey through motherhood. Um, you're helping ladies, women find uh, the ups and downs so that they can almost anticipate, yes, this is normal. I know it feels weird, but it's normal and it's okay and I'm gonna get through it, right? That's the kind of support you're helping offer as well. 
Yes, exactly. And, um, you know, really tailored to the specific life stage of motherhood that um, a mom is in. Yeah, I never forget. I just a quick story, maybe maybe a little comic relief in the middle of a deep conversation. But I remember um, we were we were given birth. We did you notice that I said we? Yeah. I had nothing. To, I sorry, Sheila. I had nothing to do with. Don't no. throw anything at me, ladies. I had nothing to do with it except. So anyway, my mother in law is there in the labor room, and I've learned to do not bring your mother in law in the labor room. So my wife, we had decided that um, it, we it just one of our own choice. We were going all natural birth, and so she we decided that. We didn't want an epidural. We learned later that there's only a window for an epidural. And if you don't take it, you don't get it. So, of course, mom, bless her heart, she's in the room holding my wife's hand at times. And she's watching the contractions on a monitor. And and bless her heart, she would say, oh, my God, Jody, here comes a big one. <laughs> it's oh about the contraction. And I'm thinking, okay, somebody needs to remove this person from our presence. Yeah. right?" So I said, Mom, you need a cup of coffee. Go outside. And uh, so I reached over and held my wife's hand, and, and we got through it. But I will say this, um, Sheila, when my wife had, I think it was our second one, she, she said, Doc, give me the epidural. And I was in the room, and the doctor asked me if I wanted to leave. I thought, no, nah, I'm a man. I can handle it. And I, I watched the doctor put the needle in my wife, and I passed out, Sheila. I ended up in the corner. Oh, no. <laughs> I thought it was the most craziest thing in the world. I remember Jody, my wife, and, and she was kind of leaning on me. I said, just lean on me. And then she kept saying, Jeff, you're getting heavy. You're getting heavier. And as the doc was trying to do his thing, I'm getting heavier on her. And then I yeah. went backwards and passed out. So anyway, little yeah. little little humor in the conversation, um, all kinds of stories wrapped around. All right, friends, listen, we've got a few minutes left. I'd love to hear from you. Um, questions, comments, thoughts that you're maybe even um, things you're going through that you feel open to share. Um, let's take some time and open the mic and uh, ask some questions. Anybody else or anybody at all have a question or a comment for our guest? Uh, go ahead and use the hand button on your mic or on your app and that way we'll know to call on you. And uh, I think there's somebody in the house that's got a question or two. Great conversation, by the way, Sheila. Thank you so yeah. much for helping us lead it. Yeah, it's beautiful. I enjoyed this. Um, any, any moms in the room? Maybe a show of love? We got moms in the room? Just a little hard in the air. Yeah. Okay. We've got we've got one in the in the house, mom. Yep. A couple of them. Yep. Absolutely. I love it. Motherhood. My hat is off. It is not. It is not easy. There's times where I know when raising our kids, Sheila. I go, but but you don't understand. All we got to do is. And she said, but Jeff, you don't understand. And I'm so I'm thinking, yes, I know. I want to hold them accountable for taking out the trash. She wants to give them a break in that parenting, right? <laughs> she wants to go easy. I want to go hard. I don't know, but uh, I love it. Um, some stuff. Let's talk about a little bit. If somebody has a question or a comment, please feel free. We've got a couple of minutes, but in the time we have, I think self-care has probably got to be on our highest priority list. Um, Sheila, so maybe some self-care tips that our our guests can apply, maybe take with them tonight after the conversation and go to work on. What would you suggest? Self-care tips. Yeah. I mean, um, I think I mentioned this earlier. Um, we might have had technical difficulties, but I think, you know, really for women, I think our bodies tell us a lot. And, um, you know, if our body is telling us something emotionally, I really am a strong believer in jotting it down and seeing if there's patterns and, you know, jot it down to, you know, two, three bullet points, like, you know, assess your emotions and just put it somewhere and release it, you know, release it to the, release that energy, you know, to space and, um, or whatever you believe in and you, you will, know that your that voice in that moment is heard and at the same time you're keeping track of what's going on so that if there are patterns if it you know is um you know psycho psycho poor psychology due to um due to something going on biologically you can you can really you know show that to your physician and say hey this is you know recurring and i um i've kept track of this and i think you know, that allows us to not just, uh, you know, not think that it's all in our head and have that evidence when we go and ask for help. Yeah. So well said. I, I, I made another note on my paper. This is something, a philosophy that I have tried to live by, teach, um, coach, etc. on. And that is, this is not 
who I am. This is something that I am experiencing. Yes, absolutely. So very important, right? That, that helps us understand this. My mama used to tell me this too shall pass, right? Yeah. We're, we're going we're gonna to get through this. Friends, thank you for being here on Circles tonight. My name is Jeff. I've been your host. Our guest is Sheila Pandey. You have to check out her website. You have to check out the work that she's doing. And if you are interested in becoming a part of her community or finding out more, you can do that on the website. Um, Sheila, thank you for being here. Any last words of encouragement, support that you would like to offer the community before we close our room tonight? Well, I just encourage everyone to um, be um, honest with yourself and it will bring, like, it will open up doors and relieve stress and you will find those people and um to open up to and if you are a mom and you're interested in our community just go check us out um the link is in the chat and we would love to have you yeah i appreciate that very much friends thank you so much for being here thank you for taking your time wherever you're at in the world for being on circles tonight um if you liked this conversation you can actually follow uh, Sheila. Now, Sheila, do you do you have groups here on Circles or are you just external? You're not on Circles. I don't I don't have a group here yet on Circles, but we okay. can connect about that. Yeah, you and I need to talk about that because I think the work that you do, I think would draw a lot of people. So we can talk offline about that. Um, anybody in the house would love to have a group like this led by Sheila or community to talk more about these issues that deal with mental health when it comes specifically to women and motherhood. Yeah, look at all the hearts. That's a good indication right there. So we will take that under advisement. So if you've liked me, if you've never been in one of my rooms before, I host the master classes. I bring experts and professionals like Sheila on the app to have these discussions. I absolutely love it. I love seeing each of your faces here tonight. So if you don't follow me, you can follow me. And then finally, at the close, you're going to be able to share your feedback. Would you do that for us? Let us know what you liked. Let us know what you're going to take with us or with you. And then uh, shout out some love for our guest. And uh, she will get that feedback as well. So Sheila, again, thank you very much. Friends, uh, any love, last love in the air from our audience for our guest tonight? Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you next time right here on Circles. Thank you again, Sheila. Bye. All right. Bye, everybody.